guys welcome back to another video hopefully you've seen my first video on this mighty BMW M5 CS if you haven't there's a link to it up here somewhere that video is fast approaching 200,000 views and it had a really positive response BMW UK very kindly gave me this car to get to Goodwood and back festival speed which has just been and I figured it would be crazy if I didn't shoot a second video. As with all of the cars that I get my hands on, I posted a picture of this M5CS on my Instagram page about five or six days ago and asked you lot what you wanted to know about this M5CS, especially considering I've already posted that rather extensive M5CS review. I received around 150 really good replies, some sarcastic ones as you'd expect, but some really good and sensible questions and subjects that you lot want me to talk about. So I'm going to pluck, let's say, eight of those out and attempt to answer them in this video today, whilst having a little bit of fun along one of my favourite stretches of road. we get to the main part of the video I'd like to do a quick and rare shout out to my brand controlandshift.com I run that with my best friend Jonathan there'll be a link in the description below we sell lots of automotive products on there including clothing like this new t-shirt I'm wearing today mugs stickers prints key rings you name it it's on there so head over using the link below and see if there's anything on there that you fancy or maybe you fancy getting for your partner reminder or refresher of what the M5 CS is all about. Here in the UK they retail at about £141,000 which is roughly £40,000 more than the F90 M5 competition. We have the familiar 4.4 litre V8 twin turbo up front underneath that gorgeous unique carbon fibre bonnet. In this car, it only produces 10 horsepower more than in the M5 competition. So we're looking at 635 horsepower, and in fact, it has the same torque figure of 750 newton meters of torque, which is enough torque, especially considering in this car, that maximum torque figure is available over a wider range of revs. All of that power and torque is connected to the ZF 8-speed gearbox, which is a very familiar gearbox across the entire BMW range really these days. And that is all fed to the ground via BMW's M X drive system. So we can have it in four-wheel drive where it's fairly equal around all four wheels. Four-wheel drive sport where it sends a lot more power through the rear axle or two-wheel drive where it decouples the front axle and you can send all of that 635 horsepower through the rear wheels which obviously can be very entertaining but more impressive than any of that to me is the weight saving this m5 cs weighs 70 kilos less than the m5 competition meaning it tips the scales at just over 1800 kilos now that's not light but for a car of this size in practicality and this performance i find that amazing in fact it's only about 100 kilos heavier than my rear wheel drive m3 competition and about 100 kilos heavier than the freshly announced and launched m240i x drive that's a two series and not even a full fat m car and this is only a hundred kilos more. It boggles my mind and that gives this car ridiculous acceleration figures and handling characteristics. In fact, BMW claim this M5 CS will do the 0-62 sprint in three seconds flat. And I timed it about six weeks ago with my race box to 60 miles an hour and managed to get 2.75 seconds. That's almost F1 acceleration unbelievable as many of you hopefully know I came back very recently from Spain on the petrolhead tours in 
my M3 competition and that was nine or ten days of pushing that car fairly hard and really getting to understand it. I then had six days at home quarantining and was throwing the keys to this car. So you could say it was a back-to-back -back comparison. And one thing I noticed straight away after not being in this car for six weeks and after spending a lot of time in my 510 horsepower M3 competition, one thing I noticed straight away is just how fast this car is. It actually makes my M3 competition feel normal and it's in gear acceleration at any revs is just mind blowing. If you'd seen my three and a half thousand mile review of my G80 M3 competition, one of my complaints is the complete lack of low down torque below about two and a half thousand RPM. Well, this car <laughs> at two and a half thousand RPM, which we're at the moment, is just blistering and even below that it's just mind-blowing the acceleration so that's two and a half thousand rpm in fourth gear we're doing 40 miles an hour foot on the floor 50 60 <laughs> any gear it's unreal and in fact even if we slow it right down like i said this car's torque really low down that's 1500 rpm at 25 miles that foot on the floor that's 40 50 60. it's just <laughs> any gear any amount of revs, you put your foot down in this car and it absolutely flies. That 4.4 litre V8 twin turbo unit, which has been around in various guises for quite a while now, is such a mighty engine, it's so strong. Yes, it's not very efficient. I've averaged about 14 miles to the gallon since I've had this car for the week, which really isn't that great. But boy, oh boy, does it get this car and throw it down the road, especially the CS that is lacking relatively in weight. Right, let's get on to those Instagram questions we talked about earlier on. If you are on Instagram, I urge you to give me a follow because it will give you the opportunity and chance to send in some questions for future videos. The first question I'm gonna read out is from Simon Gregg. Now Simon just happens to run Bramley Motor Cars which is an incredible sports and supercar showroom based in Surrey. I've been going to on and off for the past 10 years to have a draw all over their stock. So thanks a lot for the question, Simon, and I appreciate you watching my content. Simon asks if this car is really worth the money. Is it worth 40 grand more than an M5 competition? And in reality, it's probably a lot more expensive than that because you're going to get a good discount on an M5 competition. You're probably not going to get a good discount on an M5 CS if you can find one, in fact, because I believe they've all been sold. Now, I kind of touched upon this question in my original review, and I think really the M5 CS is for someone who has loads of money and <laughs> wants more than an M5 competition. If I won the lottery tomorrow, and I don't play it, but if I did and it was, let's say, 100 million or more, I would probably go out and buy one of these because I love the M5 competition, and why not have something a bit more special than the M5 competition? They're not night and day different at all, but this is more special. It has nicer seats, front and back. It has that amazing carbon fiber bonnet. It feels a bit better on the road. It is a little bit faster, so, if I had the money, then why not? And I think I said that in my original review, this is worth it if you can afford it. It's not worth it if you're looking for value for money because the M5 competition is miles better value for money. You know, you're losing a couple of percent of performance. It is worth it if you can afford it. I think you can, Simon, as well. So maybe you should get yourself one. <laughs> question or comment that I've chosen to read out is from Ivan and he said if only it had a stick but which I think he means a manual box and you all know that I'm a massive manual fan but in a car like this with well BMW claiming 635 horsepower I reckon it's much closer to 700 horsepower I just don't think a manual gearbox would suit this car very well I don't think there would be a clutch out there that would work particularly well or last very long either. So 
although in many, many cases, in fact, most cases, I would agree with you, mate. I really don't think this car would actually work with a manual gearbox because it's just so fast and you need an auto to change gear in time when you're accelerating hard because it's just so, so fast. The next question, and it is a funny one, is from Andy's underscore mini adventure and he's asked if you can quarantine in this car for 10 days because if he was to buy one he would have to sell his house to afford one like the majority of people I think and unfortunately mate I really don't think this would be the place to quarantine a normal M5 would be more comfortable these bucket seats in the front and the back are really comfortable and supportive when you're driving if you try to have a nap in here, I think it'd be really uncomfortable. So if you're thinking about doing that, buy the regular F90 M5 competition. The next question is from Edward underscore M3CS, who asks how well this car does burnouts. Just like with the F90 M5 and the F90 M5 competition, you can decouple the front axle of this MX drive system. So if we come to a stop now and I press the setup button, providing all of my traction control is switched off, I can cycle through to two wheel drive, which becomes rear wheel drive. So 635 horsepower through the rear wheels, hold it down on the brake, on the accelerator. does pretty good burnouts as you would expect with a car that has this much power and this much torque sending everything through the rear axle the next question is from Matt Pullen 64 and he wants to know how nimble this car is compared to my M3 competition does it have much steering feel or is it literally just about straight line pace and I have to say Matt this thing it's unreal. I mean, the M5 competition feels pretty incredible, and this car feels better than that, noticeably better than that. It is lighter, as we know, but I think they've just done a few little tweaks here and there. The ride quality, especially when you've got the suspension set in comfort, is better, and better ride quality on our choppy A and B roads equals better handling, and that's usually the case with all CS branded BMWs just floats over most things yet it retains such good body control through the bends and the twisties like we're coming up to now it's so good on the standard carbon ceramic ceramic brakes they feel unreal acceleration as we talked about is just mind-boggling even on these Pirelli P zeros it still doesn't seem to struggle in the dry it just controls everything so well. I would say there's more steering feel in this car than there is in the G80 M3. It definitely feels more natural than that car, which feels very, very electronic. In terms of outright performance and grip, well, I'd love to put the two on a circuit together because although this is definitely faster in a straight line, I really think the G80 M3 and the G82 M4, the front end on those cars is just incredible. And I think that they have better grip or better turn in than this car would have, but not by much. But in terms of actual feel, believe it or not, this M5 CS is more alive than both the G80 and G82. It really does feel fantastic, especially with this one. Obviously it has the carbon bucket seats, which are standard in the M5 CS. So you're getting feel through your bum and you're getting feel through your hands so it's an epic piece of kit and I really hope that I can take this out on circuit or on track one day I know they're rare I know they're limited and I know they're really expensive but BMW UK please okay Thierry underscore Bergmeister I hope I've got that correct has asked me a very good question what this M5 CS will do the 0 to 60 sprint in without using launch control or holding it on the brakes. Your typical scenario of pulling up to a set of traffic lights and just planting the accelerator in drive. So let's come to a complete stop, put it over into drive so we're in the most relaxed mode ever. Let's reset the race box. That's ready to go. And I'm just gonna plant the accelerator. So here we go. Okay, there's a bit of a hesitation off the line and there we go. Once 
once you get going, it's every bit as quick. That's 3.58 seconds. So almost a second slower than I've managed to get with launch control. Obviously, that's spooling up the turbos and holding on the brakes. I think it revs to about three, three and a half thousand RPM and you get such an aggressive launch off the line. You're not getting that with it being in drive. You're not allowing the engine to get any boost and that's where it didn't feel too impressive off the line. But then once you got to about 10, 15 miles an hour, <laughs> you felt every bit of those 635 horses and 750 newton meters of torque. Guys, thanks a lot for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it's a slightly different format to usual, but I really wanted to include you lot in it and get some great ideas as well. So I will do similar videos to this in the future. So make sure you do follow me on my Instagram profile then you can give me some inspiration and ideas and I will of course shout you out if you do. Let's just enjoy this last bit of road in this mighty car. Traction, watch this for traction and take off. Literally I have to back off there because well I'm at 60 in seconds and I do feel like I'm gonna take off <laughs> but it doesn't feel nervous it feels just lovely. Wow, this car, it's an epic piece of kit. Yes, it's silly money, but it's just silly car as well. It's silly car, but in a good way. And as I said in my original video on this car, hats off to BMW for even entertaining building this sort of car, let alone actually building it and offering it to right-hand drive and left-hand drive markets, because yeah, in this day and age where everything is going pretending to be green it's great that this sort of car still exists guys i'll see you at another video very soon thanks a lot for tuning in thanks a lot for the love and support give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and i will see you at the next one very soon cheers